This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This is the uh, second lecture uh, on the chapter on risk and uncertainty. Uh, and as I uh, did say in the previous one, the uh, remaining topic we need to look at uh, is something called value at risk, which um, is something rather different. Uh, and um, it's slightly annoying because it does involve um, some statistics, which isn't hard to explain, uh, but it's the only place in the exam where you actually need some knowledge of statistics. And so we're not going to have a statistics lecture, um, but it is a bit annoying because I, 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 I'll try and make sure you're clear what's happening, but uh, otherwise it is very much learning the rules. Uh, and what we're going to do, um, well, can be applied to projects, but it's, it's more commonly used by uh, banks. But what it is, is this. In fact, let me explain by looking at example three. Example three. It says James has a, an estimated annual standard deviation of 750,000. I'll explain what that is later. But more importantly, it's on one of its projects. It says the average annual return is 2.4 million. So we're doing this project. The average return is 2.4 million, but of course, the return might end up be ha being higher. It might end up being lower. Uh, and of course, if we're completely uncertain, then all right, on average, it may be 2.4 million. But it could end up being anything. It could actually drop to zero. Now, the chances of it dropping to zero uh, are going to be incredibly small, obviously. And so it would be a bit ridiculous to start planning on the basis that, oh, there may be no return at all. So what we do is start trying to attach probabilities and say, well, it might drop. Fine. It's hardly going to drop by 2.4 million. It could, but again, that's so unlikely. But let's work out the maximum drop there's likely to be with what we call 95% confidence. Now then, what we do is this. We assume that, all right, the returns are, are going to vary. On average, it's 2.4 million, but it may be higher, it may be lower. We assume that the returns follow what we call a normal distribution. And what a normal distribution is, if we plotted all the possible returns on a graph, how likely they were to happen, so here are the returns. We know that on average it's going to be, what was it, 2.4 million. But it might end up being higher, might end up being lower. We assume if we did put them on a graph, it would look something like this. Oh, that's, oh dear. It's not the prettiest graph in the world, but the most likely, this is what we call the frequency. And don't worry, you won't need to draw this graph. But the most likely is we will get 2.4 million. There's the average. But of course, it may be higher, maybe 3 million, maybe 4 million. It may be lower, it may be 2 million, maybe 1 million. Uh, but we assume if, if we were graphing the possible returns that it would look like that. The important thing being uh, that this graph is symmetrical. All I mean is it's just as likely to be higher as it is to be lower. So that's not drawn perfectly, but we assume it's the same both sides. Uh, in fact, a normal distribution has a very, very precise shape, but I'm not worried there. And neither should you be for the exam. But um, it is symmetrical. And of course, the chances of it being higher and higher or lower and lower get less and less. 
It is symmetrical, so there's a 50% chance it'll be lower than 2.4, there's a 50% chance it'll be higher. But the chance of it being further and further away from the average, it gets less and less. Now, OK, if we get more than 2.4 million, great, we're not worried. We're only worried if we get less than 2.4 million. And I've said, all right, there is a possibility we get zero, but that's very, very unlikely. What we're going to do is say, well, it may get lower and lower. But let's see what the lowest it can be is, such that the chance of it being even lower is only 5%. And that's what we mean by 95% confident. We can never be certain uh, that it wouldn't be zero. But if I could fix a limit there, I'm making up a figure here, but if I could fix a limit of, ooh, 100,000, let's say, but I'm inventing the figure, that's what we're going to calculate shortly. Uh, but if I were able to calculate that the chances of it being less than 100,000 are only 5%, I can say, well, I'm 95% certain or 95% confident. that it would never fall below that 100,000, and I could plan on that basis. There's always a risk, obviously, but the risk, I'd say, oh, is so small, 5% chance of it happening, and 95% certain that we'll get at least 100,000. Uh, but the question is, how am I going to decide what that limit is? You know, I made up 100,000. But I want to know, you know, to be 95% confident it will never be lower than this limit. How can I fix the figure? Well, it depends on what we call the spread of this distribution. You see, maybe for this particular project, um, it could be very high, it could be very low, there's a big spread. The average is 2.4 million, but it might be a lot higher, it might be a lot lower. On the other hand, maybe this distribution was more like this. That again, oh dear, that again the average, the most likely, is 2.4 million. It may be high, maybe lower, but the chances of it moving a lot are much smaller. The spread is much smaller. And of course, if you compare the two, here, when it could be much bigger, much smaller, uh, to only have a 5% chance of being lower, that figure is going to be much further away. Whereas here, ooh, the chance of being 5% lower is going to be much closer. And so when we come to fix that limit we're after, it does depend very much on the spread of the distribution. And the standard way of measuring the overall spread, could it be a lot higher, a lot lower, or is it always going to be much closer? The way of measuring is something called the standard deviation. Uh, the symbol for which is little sigma. Uh, and in the exam, uh, if you ask one of these questions, you would be told it. It's a measure of spread. Uh, and we are told here that it's 750,000 is our measure of spread. Now, here's where it gets slightly um, annoying. Because, as I said, this isn't a statistics exam. You will never be expected to calculate this. Uh, and so I'm not going to waste your time showing how this is arrived at. Uh, you would be given it. But it is a measure of spread. The more the distribution might spread, the more it might be a lot higher, a lot lower, the bigger this standard deviation would be. It's like the average spread away from the uh, this, this 2.4 million.
However, and even more annoying, there is one thing you'd better learn to be safe. But without going through how standard deviations are calculated, in fact, we do calculate something else first, called the variance. And it, it is worth learning. You don't need it for this particular question, but you just could throw this in. The standard deviation is the square root of something called the variance. Now, this is where I start to get annoyed because I hate just saying learn a rule. But to start going through showing you how this is calculated really would be wasting your time because you'll never, ever be asked to calculate it. You'll either be given the standard deviation directly, most likely 750,000, or you could just be given a figure and said the variance is x. In which case, you would be expected to know that to get the standard deviation which we're going to need uh, is the, squ it's the square root of the variance. However, back to where we were, and we're nearly there now. But I want to know, remember, how far away, how much lower than 2.4 million could we be, such that the chance of being even further away is only 5%. I've already said it depends on the level of spread. If there's a lot of spread, the figure's going to be much lower. If there's very little spread, the figure's going to be much higher. And so, what we do is we find out what this distance is. First of all, in units of spread, we find that distance in numbers of standard deviations. And we've got tables that will let us do it. And so if you look at the tables, uh, they're printed in the lecture notes, and these are the tables you get given in the exam. Uh, what we need to know, first of all, is how many standard deviations, unit, numbers of standard deviations, is that distance there? such that there's only 5% chance of being below it. And the way we do it is this. Now, I've already said that curve is symmetrical. So, the chances of being below the average are 50%. I want to set this cutoff so there's only a 5% chance of being further away. Well, 50% would cover everything. We want to do, cut off that little 5%. And so I need this area, that distance, to be the difference of 45%. So for a 5% cutoff, 50 minus 5, I want there to be a 45% chance of being between the 2.4 million, the average, and my cutoff. Now then, if you turn to the normal distribution tables, you'll see we're going to have to use them in reverse. I want to know how many standard deviations that distance is, such that that's 45%. The tables will tell you the percent for any numbers of standard deviations. They tell you as a decimal. So what we need for a 5%, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, for a 95% confidence level, for 
think back to the table, but we need to know how many standard deviations uh, give uh, a probability of, because it's symmetrical, for 95%, I'm sorry I keep repeating, but for 95 percent cut off, 45% here, for 95%, well, 50% chance it will be above, 45% chance of it being below, a probability of 95 minus 50, or 45%, which is a decimal, is 0 0.450. Now, if you look at the tables, for any number of standard deviations, it will give us the probability. Uh, this table, uh, down the side, you've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, so on, standard deviations. Um, the columns are giving you an extra decimal place. So, for instance, if it was 1.50 standard deviations, the answer from the table, it would be 1.5 down the um, left-hand column. For 1.50, it would be the first of those columns, and the answer would be 0.4332. It would mean there was a 43% chance of the distance being 1.50 standard deviations. Oh, just one more. Uh, if it was 2.58 standard deviations, well, you'd look at 2.5 down the left-hand column, and then as you run along, those figures are for 2.50, 2.51, and so on. So the 0 0.08 column, 2.5 row, 0 0.08 column, you'd get 0 0.4951. It would mean there was a 49.51% chance of the distance being 2.58 zeros, that's some deviations. Well, we're having to work backwards we want to know how many standard deviations will give an answer of 45% or 0 0.450. And if you look through the tables, ooh, an answer of 0.45. Ah, look along the 1.6 row, and you'll see as you run along, 1.64 gives an answer of 0.4495. Uh, 1.65 gives an answer of one uh, of 0 0.4505, and so, well, to get one point uh, so to get to 0.45 is somewhere between the two. I'll say 1.645 standard deviations. Uh, that's halfway between 1.64 and 1.65. So that's how we find out the distance in numbers of standard deviations, but of course I need to know the distance in dollars. Well, no problem. We are told the standard deviation, and therefore that distance there, the distance below the average, where the chances of being further away are only 5%, that distance in dollars is 1.645 times 750,000, which is 1233750. Uh, and what does that mean? What it means is this, the average return is 2.4 million, we knew that.
But we know it may be higher, great. We know it may be lower, which is where the problem is. But I am now 95% confident uh, that it will not fall by more than One, two, three, three, seven, five, zero. Oh. It could fall more, obviously. There's five percent chance it might fall more than that. But I'm ninety-five percent sure that it won't fall by more than that. One point two three three million, and that is the value at risk. Now, sorry that it's taken me a long time to explain. Um, I'm going to do a couple more things, which it then starts to become a rule. Uh, but I do think it's important you, you understand the basic idea. Uh, this was 95%. Um, we could have done it for any percent. In the exam, you'll be told. Uh, and in the exam, they'll either want it at the 95% confidence level, so there's only a 5% chance of it falling by more than that. But they could have asked you for the 99% confidence level. And the logic's the same. Again, I want to know how much can it fall by, where the chances of it falling by even more, only 1%. Well, for the chances of it falling more than 1%, again, think of the graph. I want the limit so this is only 1%. Oh, dear. That this is only 1%. And therefore, there's a 99% chance of it being above the limit. Because it's symmetrical, there's a 50% chance of it being more the average than the average. And so, the chances of it falling, well, I'm limiting to 49%. We will look up in the tables for 99 minus 50. We'll look up in the tables for 49% or 0 0.49. So that's the way you do it. Whatever confidence level it is, subtract 50%, 99 minus 50, 49, and it's that that we're looking up for in the tables. Uh, in the exam, it's always 95, 99. In theory, you know, what about 80%? Well, if it was 80%, 80 minus 50 is 30%. You'd look up for 0.3. Uh, what's it going to be for 0.490? Well, again, it's work back from the tables. So if we work back, I want an answer of 0.49. Ah, if you look on the 2.3 row, 2.30, the answer will be 0.489. That's not enough. 2.31, for it's 2.32. Ah, 2.33. Standard deviations gives us 0 0.4901. Well, that's near enough. I'm not worried about 0 0.01. And so the distance is 2.33 standard deviations. And how much is that? 2.33. One standard deviation is 750,000 per the question. 2.33 times 750,000. One seven four seven five hundred. And what does that mean? It means I'm ninety nine percent. Sorry, start again. The average was two point four million. I accept it could drop to anything, but I'm ninety nine percent certain, confident that it won't drop by more. 1.747 million. 
and 99% certain that that's the most that's at risk. The chances of it dropping by more than that are, are tiny, it's only 1%. And although um, you won't do a series of these, you'll only do what's asked for, given we've done it twice, does that make sense? I was 95% certain it wouldn't drop by more than 1.2 million. So there's a 5% chance it could drop more. However, I'm 99% certain it won't drop by more than 1.7 million. There's only a 1% chance of it dropping by more than that. And so the, the more confident you are, the bigger limit you end up giving. Now, I, I, I hope I've made sense there, and so you could actually do it yourself at any level of confidence. I have said, though, that in the exam, it's all almost 100% certain, a confidence level. Um, it'll only ever be 95% or 99 And so, although I think you should be able to use the tables, and I've shown you how, um, if you want, you can learn. For 95%, it'll be 1.645 standard deviations. For 99%, it'll be 2.33 standard deviations. And so it's your choice. As I say, if you just learn that, then there's virtually no doubt that's all you'd need. Um, but if you understood me, it doesn't take many minutes to look up in the tables anyway. However, we have one thing remaining. If you look back at the question, he said, estimate the value at risk at a 95% confidence level for one year. And we've done that because over one year, the average was 2.4 million and the value at risk at the 95% level, what was it? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 3, 7, 50. Uh, the question also asks, and again this has happened in the exam, it says, what's the value at risk over the project's whole life, which is six years? So over six years, how much return do we expect over the six years? Well, if on average it's 2.4 million a year, the average return over six years will be six times 2.4 million. is 14.4 million. Sure. And of course, just as the average return each year might be higher or lower, the total return over the six years on average will be 14.4. But the total for the same reasons as before. The total might be higher, might be lower. And I want to know how much lower could it be such that there's only a 5% chance of it being even lower. And so just like before, it depends on the spread of this distribution. But the spread's going to be different because we know that we're looking at just one year, we're looking at the turnover over the whole six years. Well, a little tiny little formula you'd better learn. If we're doing it over six years, seven years, eight years, so on, the total standard deviation over n years, I'll do it for this one in a minute, but you know, you could be, this could be asked for any number of years. The total standard deviation over n years, I'd love to say, oh, 
It's n times the yearly standard deviation. We can't. It's because it, it's all based on variances. Uh, again, this is annoying because I don't want to give a statistics lecture. It's not a statistics exam. But to get the total, we multiply the annual standard deviation by the square root of n. And learn that. It's easy to apply and then, well, the rest of the questions are easy. It means for our question, here the life is, what, six years? So the total standard deviation, the annual one was 750,000. We multiply by the square root of 6, because it's 6 years, and we get 1837117. So there's the standard deviation over 6 years. We already know the average over the six years was six times 2.4 million. I'm working out again, was 14.4 million. And we want to know the value at risk, how much that 14.4 million could drop by with 95% confidence. Well, I said before, and I'm not going to waste time here, at 95% confidence, it's 1.64 standard deviation, 645, which over the whole six years, 1.645 times 1837117, uh, which is 1.6. Two oh five eight. So there we are. Uh, over the whole six year period, the average will be fourteen point four. It may be higher, it may be lower, but I'm ninety five percent confident that it won't fall by more than the total of the six years by more than three point zero two two million. That is the value at risk over the six years. All right, now it's taken a while. Uh, I don't know, you may have found that very easy or you may be uh, a bit worried. Let me give you, finally, uh, a little puzzle. Just check that you've got it. For the same question, the same question, I want you to calculate for me if the life of the project is four years, what is the value at risk over the life at the 99% confidence level? So everything else in the question is the same. So the annual deviation is 750,000. The annual return, the average is 2.4 million. Well, if the project life were four years, what's the value at risk over that four-year life at the 99% level? As I've said in previous, some previous lectures, it really is worth your, your while doing it yourself. So I would pause the lecture, do it, then check and check that you got it right. Anyway, I'll assume you paused, so I'll carry on. Uh, first of all, uh, the four-year standard deviation. We take the annual deviation of 750,000. We multiply by the root of the number of years. It's four years, so multiply by the square root of four, which means the four-year standard deviation, square root of four obviously is two, two times 750 is 1.5 million. Uh, for the value at risk, 
Well, at the 99% confidence level, the value at risk, remember, I did write down at 95%, it's 1.645 standard deviations. At 99%, it's 2.33 standard deviations. And so the value at risk, 3.495 million. Uh, well, I didn't ask for, but anyway, the average, of course, over the four years, is four times the annual return, 9.6 million. So on average it's 9.6, may be higher, may, may end up being higher, may end up being lower. Uh, but I'm 95, 99% certain, sorry, that if it is lower, it won't fall by more than 3.495 million. And there we are. Uh, and just to remove one worry some you may have, whenever you're asked how you're at risk, it's asked in that sort of way, example three. Uh, there are no more complications. You will be told the uh, standard deviation, or as I said, possibly the variance, but almost certainly the standard deviation. You will be told the average. You'll be told what confidence level. But that could easily be a five, six mark part of the question.